Okay, the people who say that I'm an idiot because I don't understand that um, entropy, the idea that uh, all things tend to fall apart, or to use Rudolf Clausius's words, um, they, it's, a, it's a crazy word, degregation is what he calls it, um, which basically means falling apart. Uh, it's disgregation. That's his big word. Okay, people say Bloom is an idiot because Bloom doesn't understand that the theory of entropy only applies to closed systems. Well, that would tend to indicate that it doesn't really apply to the universe, and you have to understand what this weird thing called a closed system is in order to really understand entropy, and Bloom is too, cra is, is too idiotic, too dumb, uh, too lobotomized to understand what a closed system is. Okay, we have a lot of little problems here. First of all, Rudolf Clausius does not say that entropy only applies to closed systems. He says entropy applies to the universe. Let me read you the English translation of what Clausius himself had to say. The energy of the universe is constant. Hey, great idea, the conservation of matter and energy, terrific. Number two, the entropy of the universe tends to a maximum. Remember, in both of those clauses, he used the word universe. He did not use the word closed system. The aspiration of the entropists of the second law of thermodynamics is not to explain some tiny little system tucked away in some invisible little corner of the universe. It is to explain the universe. And when the people arguing about entropy say, oh no, this only applies to a tiny little corner of the universe, they're lying. They're lying. Is there such a thing as a closed system in this universe? No, even a cylinder is not a closed system. A cylinder is affected, it can be sealed as effectively as you want. It's affected by gravity. Cosmic rays, uh, neutrinos are passing through it. It is a part of this universe. It is influenced by this universe. Things enter it, things pass through it, despite our best efforts to isolate it. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no such thing as a closed system in this universe. T.J. Kincaid, the amazing atheist, was kind enough to find a friend who is a physicist who explained. I could read it to you, but let me summarize it for you. He explained in no uncertain terms why I am a gangling fool and an idiot. First of all, he explained that the second law of thermodynamics, the law of entropy, that all things fall apart, that all things tend toward disorder, that all things tend toward uselessness, applies in closed systems. Well, as we've just discussed, closed systems do not exist anywhere in this cosmos. There is nothing immune to gravity in this cosmos. There is nothing through which neutrinos do not pass in this universe. Nothing. Nothing is in isolation in this universe anywhere. Secondly, I had the obvious idiocy of not understanding that the second law of thermodynamics only applies to systems that don't have gravity, that are not affected by gravity. Ladies and gentlemen, look at a picture of the universe. Look at my Big Bagel Theory of the Universe animation on YouTube. Any theory, mine or anybody else, these days, post-Einstein, takes it for granted that gravity is everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Gravity makes the entire shape of the universe, every corner of it. There is no such thing as a closed system in this universe, and there is no such thing as a system that is immune to gravity. So what the physicist is confessing, without realizing it, is that the second law of thermodynamics, that all things fall apart, that all things tend toward entropy, that all things tend toward disorder, doesn't apply anywhere in this universe. If it doesn't apply any place in this universe, what good is it? It's great if we want to understand some other universe based on entirely different assumptions, but let's set it aside for that and let's not keep claiming that it applies to this universe. It has been said in some of the criticisms, Bloom, the idiot, doesn't understand his science. Um, this is not about the universe falling apart. That's only an example that popularizers use to get the idea across. Well, once upon a time, there was a guy named Lord Kelvin. 
in the middle of the 19th century. He was not a popularizer. He was the leading scientist of his day. He was also one of the leading proponents of the second law of thermodynamics in his day. And what did he come up with? He came up with the idea of heat death. He came up with the idea that the universe would entirely fall apart someday, just like steam that goes from a highly useful state when it's steam and you put it in a cylinder to um, whatever the hell it is that comes out, which is too tepid to use for energy derivation for the operation of an engine anymore. Which brings us to the real point. I mean, the, the real question here is, is Lord Kelvin right? Is the universe running down? like a steam engine whose fire has died? Or is the universe running up? What we've discovered in 250 years is a record of things constantly climbing. Once upon a time, life was only bacteria. The bacteria eventually got together in big collectives called animals and plants. The animals and plants eventually developed brains. The brains eventually developed intelligence. Intelligence eventually developed culture. Does this sound like a universe that is tumbling down the staircase of order constantly falling down? Does it sound like a steam engine whose, engi whose fire has been put out and is gradually running down? Or does it sound like the very opposite? Something is running up. The problem here is that the thermodynamicists since the beginning have been trying to understand the universe as a waterfall. That was one of the original, that was the original metaphor that was used by the original thermodynamicists and a steam engine. Now, is a universe, is our universe really like a steam engine? Is our universe really like a waterfall? Have you ever seen a steam engine assemble itself? Ever? Think about it for a minute. How often have you seen steam engines assembling themselves? You see lots of automobiles in the streets these days. How many of those automobiles put themselves together? Did the universe, was the universe assembled in a factory in Detroit? Was the universe assembled at Bolton and Watts factory in England? Or did it assemble itself? Ladies and gentlemen, this universe assembled itself. If it assembled itself, in what way is it similar to a machine? In what way is it similar to a waterfall? In what way is it similar to a steam engine? Is there something wrong with the metaphor, the underlying metaphor, with which thermodynamicists are trying to comprehend this cosmos? Yes, it is true. Engines run down. Yes, it is true that in a waterfall, in a water mill, water comes from above and falls down below. But are those metaphors applicable to a cosmos that went from a Big Bang to a rapidly spreading sheet of space and time, to a precipitation of quarks, to a ganging up of quarks and threesomes, which we know as neutrons and protons, to the ganging up of neutrons and electrons in atoms, and the ganging up of atoms in clouds of gas and the aggregation of clouds of gas in galaxies and the clumping of galactic wisps of gas into stars and stars developing around them, pulling together around them, planets and planets pulling together macromolecules called life and life eventually getting intelligence. Does that resemble a waterfall going downhill constantly going down. Does that really resemble a steam engine running out of steam? Those who are convinced that I am an idiot, which could easily be I'm an idiot under many, many circumstances, um, but not when it comes to the second law of thermodynamics, say, but Bloom doesn't understand that we are not applying this to the universe. Like hell, you are not applying this to the universe. Let's go back to the man who laid down the rules of thermodynamics, rule number one and rule number two, Rudolf Clausius, who says, where is it? 
The energy of the universe is constant. The entropy of the universe tends to a maximum. If you are claiming that the second law of thermodynamics was not intended to apply to the universe, you are weasel shitting us. Those are the two big complaints. But the bottom line comes to this. Is this a universe tumbling down a staircase of order, constantly falling? Is this a universe falling like the water that goes over a water mill? Is this a universe running down like a steam engine? Is this a universe that can be understood through the metaphor of a steam engine and of a water mill at all? Or is this a universe climbing upwards? And if it climbs upwards, how the hell does it do it? And if scientists are using the second law to refuse to look at that climb, what right do they have to call themselves scientists?